Welcome back to Football on Five. The Leeds faithful are braving Moscow's chill tonight. Will they get a performance to warm them up? We can have a look at uh, the Leeds side playing this evening. One change from Saturday. Backers in there instead of Smith. Uh, an attacking lineup, Tony? It still is very much an attacking lineup. Uh, slightly more defence, obviously, with Smith there going on the bench and Backer uh, into the team. But I think you'll see a lot of forward runs from Backer and Harry Kuehl, you know, supporting uh, Bridges as a lone striker. And John, uh, not a bad side with Huckabee on the bench, is it? I mean, he's perfect to come on in, in this kind of situation, you know, especially with his pace. But, uh, you know, just saying, we hope it's a spectacle. I mean, it'd be nice if they score one early on. Let's liven the game up a bit. You know, that's, that's where I'd like. I know the Leeds fans are beginning to stick now if they wanted to cruise through. But, you know, we want to see a good performance. I think they are through. But let's just, uh, hopefully it's going to be a great game. From Tony, uh, from Locomotive Moscow, Tony, um, mm. all they can do, I mean, the first 20 minutes is going to be key, isn't it? They've got to score, they've got to go all out for attack. That's right, it's going to be vital for them, but I think they're capable of doing it. That's the thing, I think if you watch the, the first 20 minutes in the first game, uh, they were exceptional, had a good few chances, and without Nigel Martin pulling off some, some fantastic saves, you know, the score could have been more respectable. But I still fancy that the steel of the Leeds team will uh, we'll see them through with no problems at all. OK, well, we shall see. All is about to be revealed. Uh, we can go over to our commentators now. In Moscow, Joe Jordan and Gary Blue. Thanks Steve, good evening everyone. Leeds find themselves in on the threshold of round three of the UEFA Cup and arguably it's only then the real tournament begins. Champions League failures, Arsenal, Rangers, Borussia Dortmund and five more enter the competition tomorrow and rub shoulders the likes of Juventus, Ajax, Parma, Anderlecht and Roma. This is hardly an easy competition to win. So Leeds playing five across the midfield. Joe Jordan, does that say to you they're going to take this slightly more cautiously tonight than usual? Yes, I think it's common sense uh, to come to a place like Moscow, um, especially when you have a team that is relatively inexperienced, and I think it's a, it's a good policy. They have a, a favourable lead, and I think, uh, as we all know, the first 20 minutes are important. I think you'll see that shape in the team, certainly for the first 20 minutes, half an hour. It's 26 years since Leeds won their last European trophy when this competition was known as the Intercities Fairs Cup. It's Sarkisi now with a chance now for Lokomotiv Moscow. He really buried his boot into the very soggy turf. It's been raining for most of the afternoon in Moscow. Radovi just squirming the ball away but not very far. And this is exactly how Lokomotiv Mos Moscow wanted to start the game. Sarkisi. Pashinin, Loskov's calling for the ball. Well, that was an early opportunity there. Sarkisian really messed it up. Um, it came relatively easily. And uh, Leeds have got away with it. And really, they just want to settle down for this first initial period of the game. Smirchin challenging for the ball. He got there out of his mark and was looking here for Bulikin. And that's... It goes down as a chance and Nigel Martin urges his defenders to stay cautious in the opening few minutes. We've had less than two minutes of the game and Lokomotiv Moscow have thrown down the gauntlet to Leeds United. Remember, Lokomotiv do have a lot of ground to make up, but they're attempting to eat up the ground early on. Good opportunity. Well, it certainly was. Bulikin, who came on as a substitute in the first game, really having the chances, uh, been a little bit rash with the shot. But again, an early warning for Leeds. They want to really get in possession of the ball and try and get some passes in and get some possession going. They have a free kick over on that far side, which Gary Kelly will take. Kelly, who was sidelined the whole of last season due to a shin split injury. And he just got his first team place back, displacing Mills from the Leeds starting 11. Kewell just trying to find half a yard here. As Hart behind him. McPhail up in support as well. It's very heavy down in the corner. Gary fooling with that long ball and able to pick out Bulikin. And it's Gary Kelly for Leeds United. And Bridges is offside. Michael Bridges tonight playing as a lone striker. David O'Leary did have the opportunity of including Alan Smith or even Darren Huckabee. But Bridges' pace up front and his ability to hold the ball up gave him the vote. Yes, it's, uh, as a player, so young as he may be, but a lot of responsibility on Bridges tonight. And he'll need a lot of support coming from midfield, especially from Boyer and Harry Kuehl and Bakker on the, the right-hand side. But uh, when the, the ball does get up there, you really want Bridges to hold it up and give his team a little bit of a rest at the back. 
Nick Matulin gives possession back to Leeds United. Nick Matulin, who had a very disappointing time at Ellen Road. There's Eddie Gray, the Leeds assistant coach. Bridges. Lovely turn by Bridges. Wall up to safety by Ali Fulin, up towards Bulikin, but Woodgate's there first. Leeds just trying to bring some authority to this football match. They almost conceded a goal very early on. Ian Hart now, the Leeds left back. Kewell's offside. Well, that's slightly better from Leeds. I mean, they strung some passes together there. And I'm sure that'll give the players a little bit more confidence. The start of um, Eddie was up there showing his uh, discontent with the way things were going. And uh, I'm sure that that little passing movement will just give them a, a, bit, a little bit more relaxed than they were to begin with. Suleiman. Oh, lovely ball by Batty. Bowyer now for Leeds. Here's Harry Kewell. Remember, a goal for Leeds and they could end the tie early on. Pushed by Kewell. And Locomotive Moscow have a free kick. Smirton. The stadium is only half full, rather surprisingly. And that will suit Leeds United. They don't have to play this game against the noisy backdrop of impassioned Russians urging their side on. Here's Smirton. Loskov now for Locomotive. Batty fouled him, free kick, and Loskov is really adept at these free kicks in this sort of situation. He scored with one at Ellen Road. He's already demonstrated, as you said, uh, Gary, Ellen Road, there. he can hit them both with right and left. Uh, Nigel Martin on the net to Ellen Road. Here's the incident here. He just picks it up there, Roscov. A tackle from the side, the referee's interpretation. It is a foul. Slightly harsh, I would say. It could only be Loskov with the free kick. Leeds United, beware. And these haven't taken any chances. They've actually decided to put someone on the post, coming off the post, so they, they are very wary of it. It's Loskov straight into the Leeds defensive wall. All the way through to Nick Matulin. Locomotive Moscow do have plenty of experience in recent seasons in European football. They've reached the semi-finals of the last two editions of the Cup Winners' Cup. They went out to Lazio last season in the last four. And there was real shock and surprise when they lost heavily at Ellen Road. Here's Kewell. Batty, who doesn't normally shoot. Kelly, Bridges to Amex. Mike came through to Lee Bowyer. They've got no great power in his header. David O'Leary was talking about the goal mouth areas and saying how heavy they were and he was wondering whether his goalkeeper Nigel Martin might have a problem tonight. They're very muddy indeed. Oganassian who plays over on the left hand side for Locomotive. He came on as a substitute at Ellen Road. Replacing Pashini. Another free kick to Leeds. Well it's lively to say the least. I don't think Leeds United particularly wanted that. Kelly. And again, Leeds might be caught short-handed here. Bulikin. There's Radaby for Kepney. He's released the ball to Loskov. Sarkeesian. Has support from Laverick. And Sarkeesian. Laverick. Took a deflection and well fielded by Nigel Martin. Kiel. Kill was fouled in the process of back healing that ball. This is Ian Hart who no doubt will be turning his attentions soon towards the Republic of Ireland's forthcoming Euro 2000 playoff against Turkey. Bridges caught offside. Michael Bridges who really has warmed to his task in the lead attack after making that expensive move from Sunderland in the summer months. Sarkeesian who switch wings now and is away from Woodgate who just caught him. Jonathan Woodgate who has not been included in Kevin Keegan's England squad for the forthcoming playoff against Scotland. Given a couple of years, he'll be a regular, I'm sure. 
So, once again, Leeds have to be cautious here. Bulikin waits for the cross. He's closely pleased by Woodgate. Away by Kelly. Kill. Sula Martin. Smirting. Sula Martin again. And there was a trip there on David Batty. I noticed in the game at Ellen Road, Locomotive liked to play through the middle, liked to play short passing. And I think that's one of the decisions that David O'Leary had to do, and he put three men in there again. Laverick's header puts Locomotive under pressure. This is Laverick again. Smirch in for Locomotive Moskin. Radaby. Hart. This is Laverick here. It was instrumental in Leeds' first goal a fortnight ago, deflecting Lee Bowyer's shot past his own goalkeeper. It was technically Bowyer's goal. Maverick again. Smirted. Sarkisian tries to stay on side. It's turned in here towards Loskov. And on a dry night, that ball might have held up. We're hardly in the midst of the Russian winter in Moscow. It's not that cold but the driving rain might have made conditions very tricky indeed but the rain just eased off about half an hour before kickoff Laverick and he's back to Nick Matulin Drafted into the cheek. Batty. Batty. Kelly. Right in a rather chance to pick out a lead player, but he's given it away here. Sarkisian. Bulikin in support. Only two red shirts up at the moment. Sarkisian. Oh, he's almost beaten Nigel Martin. Well, a goalkeeper of Nigel Martin's class. Not even often beaten from that sort of range. Incidentally, kickoff here at local time was nine o'clock. He might just be getting in from work, but uh, it's getting on a bit in the capital of Russia. Most uh, international games kick off at 9 p.m. local time. Here's Smirting. Lovely run by Smirting. Oh. Okay, well that's another warning for Legion United Smith coming there and was well blocked by Lucas Radebe there. Really a short corner kick being taken, played back. Oloskov is... Oloskov looking for that opening, here's uh, Smirtin. Solomartin, Loskov. Organassian with a rather wasteful ball. That's Nigel Martin's enormous kick. Chugainov with a header. McPhail now, who's just broken into the Leeds team. And there's a handball, and Leeds have a free kick here. Now, the locals don't like that one little bit. But uh, the referee, Alan Sars from France, was absolutely adamant there was a handball in there somewhere. And Ian Hart, I think, fancies it. So is that Harry Kuehl? Mr. Hart. Um, teeing the ball up like a golfer might on a soggy tee on an October afternoon. Ian Hart, who has scored three times this season. Let's see what he can do here. Hart, he's got it past the wall, but not on target. Not by a long way. Really, in conditions like this, Gary, you want at least to hit it on target. With the grass so so skiddy. You know, you wanted to hit it and make the goalkeeper make a save and get your forwards to fall off and see if there's any pieces there. Lead to check again. This is Bridges and Bowyer. Given away to Chugainov. Solomon. Took a bit of a dive there over Backer's challenge, but the referee bought it for line and sinker. Eric Backer, the Norwegian under-21 captain. 
will be joining up with his international colleagues at under 21 level for a, two important games against Spain in a playoff for the under 21 championships there's Betty Bridges all the way through to Ning Matulin the goalkeeper I must tell you we were caught up on our way to the ground today in the mother of all traffic jams and at one stage I was slightly concerned along with my co commentator Joe Jordan whether we'd actually get to the ground yeah there was a slight panic there but <laughs> at the end of the day the driver he did the business knew a few shortcuts it made Oxford Street look absolutely empty the uh, city centre of Moscow about five o'clock Smirtin did well to control the ball. That's Laverick who's helped it through, but Locomotive, who are anxious to get a goal in the opening 15 minutes of this game, just haven't managed to do so. And although they have had a couple of shots on goal, Nigel Martin has only had one save to make so far. Yes, but I think David O'Leary will be disappointed that so far in the short period of time that the game has gone on, that Locomotive have had they've had three chances, three opportunities to really to reduce that that deficit and they've got off the hook a little bit Leeds United but they've started to calm down and coming into the game more Bridges always away from his marker Kewell penalty Harry Kewell wins a penalty for Leeds United as he was caught there by Alexei Arifulin and there's a hug from Bridges and Leeds know how important a step this might be well it's certainly well, well played by Bridges initially and we have Kewell I don't think there's any dispute in that Kewell showing how positive a player he is and the reward is that as an opportunity really to, to kill the tie it's Ian Hart for the penalty for Leeds after a quarter of an hour and he scored and Leeds will feel that they're already through now to tomorrow's draw in Geneva They've weathered the early storm here. Well, it's a well taken penalty. Goalkeeper goes the wrong way, and it's, I think it may have just went running off the post, but placed in such a way they would have no chance, even if they had a win in the right direction. David O'Leary said to us this morning, Joe, he always fancied his team to score an away goal. But even if Locomotive Moscow did find the target tonight, he thought Leeds would score. Well, I think Locomotive have shown that they, they can create chances. But I think before tonight, before that example from Kuro, that uh, we, we do know that Leeds on the form that they have shown this season are capable of scoring a goal, whether it's at Ellen Road or away. They, they have players who are at, on forum, who are scoring goals. And um, I don't think it could be the last. I think Leeds could go, bide their time and maybe pick them off again. Well, John Beresford, uh, back in the studio, I think was talking about you'd hope there was an early goal in this match. I think it's gone the wrong way, hasn't it? Well, I think for the neutral, the, the goal has certainly uh, not gone in the direction. I think for Leeds, the Leeds fans, it's a, it's a marvellous break through that. It really puts them in a very, very commanding position. And Radaby might be beaten here. Well, Leakin was through now. What's the referee going to give here? Play on. He reckons Balikin was play acting and Bridges is offside now that's a controversial incident when Bolikin was through and maybe on another day with the luck against them Leeds might have well, here's the incident. been caught out Loskov plays the ball through it's a foul Joe oh I think it, uh, it went in the favour of Leeds there if somebody had caught you like that Joe when you were clean through on goal you'd have had a thing that was two or two to say about it wouldn't you well I wouldn't have been too pleased I would have been certainly looking being a home team for the, the referee giving me the benefit of the doubt Moscow for Leakin and clear to safety by Martin Addy Fulin who gave away the penalty Loskoff now smirting for Locomotive Moscow there's an opening here for Leakin wonderful save by Nigel Martin who urges his defenders once again just to keep vigilant because he knows how tricky this attack can be Sarkeesian Batty 
We've seen a marvellous save by Nigel Martin, who, for my money at least, is the in-form goalkeeper in the English Premier League at the moment. I've heard a little whisper that he won't be playing for England against Scotland. It'll be David Seaman who'll play in goal, barring injury or illness. But for me, Nigel Martin really is up there with the best of them. That's not David O'Leary, and it's one Eddie Gray, former teammate of the men sitting next to me, Joe Jordan. Yeah, I think Eddie, looking at the way the game has gone so far, he realised that uh, Lokomotiv had more chances than they would have liked, but they have that advantage, and really the goal is very significant. It really, it, for me, puts it beyond Lokomotiv, especially when they continue to make the chance and miss as they have done. But this is a great opportunity here. Oh. Well, that was the, the, the free kick, which I think was a foul. Now, Davy got his challenge in, but it was slightly, I wonder, slightly late. I wonder, Joe, you know, if that had been a free kick and given, whether Radaby would be off the field. Well, that, that is a possibility as well, because it wasn't a goal-scoring position, and it was central. We'll gloss over that one, as they say. But the coach of Lokomos Lokomotiv Moscow... Suminen is now looking at his side, trying to rescue a 5-1 aggregate deficit. This really will be one of the last games Lokomotiv play this season. They have a cup run still to fulfil, and here's Bridges for Leeds. They were hoping their season would be extended by UEFA Cup run. Should go off with a header. Harry Fulin longest serving player in the locomotive squad Leeds who have such a proud history in this tournament especially in the days when it was the Intercities Fairs Cup Loskoff with that through ball it's clear by Woodgate not for the first time Bridges caught offside Here's the, uh, I think the save's coming up here. That's oh, a beautiful ball played down there behind Woodgate. And then he, well, Eakin has got on to it. And it is a good save, but it's also, when you look at it from the centre forward's point of view, it's an opportunity he should have stuck away. Well, Eakin, one of the players who no doubt will interest some of the Western European coaches. I wouldn't be at all surprised if Bolikin was playing in Holland or England or Spain before too long. Sarkeesian and once again the referee is not impressed with one or two of the locomotive Moscow players looking for free kicks and Sarkeesian is the latest recipient of a bit of a verbal tongue lashing from Monsieur Alain Sass by Pashinin Solomart if you've just come in from work Ian Hart's goal separates the two teams he scored it from the penalty spot his fourth goal of the season and it's taken the wind out of the sails of Locomotive Moscow who put Leeds under pressure for the opening couple of minutes but Leeds just seem to have settled down a bit Backer Organassian Here by Nigel Martin. Harry Kills after this one, trying to get away from Harry Fulin, who was late again, and Harry Kill, who rarely gets injured, was left nursing his ankle there. Here's Kuehl again, he's away from Harry Fulin, but he was doing some pushing. Harry Kuehl, who has been involved in something of a dispute, if you believe, the newspapers at least, with the Leeds United club over his desire to go back to Australia to play in a couple of friendlies against Brazil. I understand that Kuehl is unlikely to go to Australia for both matches. He might be released to go to for one of them, but there's no dispute between Leeds and Harry Kuehl, let's put it that way. Well, he's certainly shown tonight in early part of his performance that his mind is totally focused on the job that has to be done tonight. And this is Becker. 
that's a lovely ball for Lee Bowyer Lee Bowyer who is struggling a bit with a groin strain which uh, eventually is going to need an operation the coach looks cold he needs uh, one of those warm coats on or maybe one of Adam Dark's Russian hats Lee Bowyer apparently is um, just nursing that injury David O'Leary was saying to me this morning that he can play on uh, the weekend and then the following weekend and he feels no ill reaction to it but when they have a midweek game Bowyer struggles slightly so I wouldn't be at all surprised given the state of this tie whether Bowyer comes off Yes, I would agree with you there, Gary. He is, he is a player that is on form, especially scoring goals. But I think when they do get an opportunity to rest the players, important players like him, I think they will do that. And utilise, especially, again, if they can, get a stage in the game where they know it's beyond the opposition to come back. Maybe give someone else an opportunity and give them some experience who's slightly younger. Batty. They don't get much younger than Boya, do they? No, they don't, but <laughs> Leeds, uh, young team as they may be, there's still got some smashing young players needing the opportunity to gain the experience. I think that's what we have tonight. I think Leeds are at a stage now where the game really, or the tie, is beyond locomotive and, and you've really got to, to use this examination, let's say, uh, to get experience for the future ties coming up. Chuganov. Bulikin and Smirtin or other Organassian claiming he was obstructed then and this time the referee gives the free kick the way of Lokomotiv Moscow I know many of you will be watching Channel 5's coverage of this game from the West Yorkshire area so if you're coming in from work I hope you will enjoy the scoreline with Leeds leading by an Ian Hart penalty Of course, uh, Leeds United fans from around the country, welcome to if you live in Chapel Town or down on the south coast of England. Leeds are well and truly in command here. Going to Leeds which the goal scorer Ian Hart will take now let's see if you pick out the man they nicknamed the Wizard of Oz Harry Kuehl Ian Hart is slotting himself up to check another long ball into the locomotive Moscow penalty area oh they all missed it oh and Bridges is almost in there backer really made life difficult there for Lokomotiv Moscow his presence unsettled the defence and there was almost another goal for Leeds Batty Backer another free kick to Leeds United we just switched on the Leeds team news is that Leeds are playing five midfield players and Alan Smith is the player who misses out tonight otherwise Leeds are unchanged Chuganov and it'll be a throw in to Leeds and a chance to hear from former Leeds left back Tony DiRigo who's in the studio tonight Tony how do you reckon Leeds are doing so far? Well now they're doing very well I think uh, David O'Leary we are a very happy manager but I think the scoreline doesn't quite tell the, uh, the full story I think at the start as you saw the um, locomotive uh, made many chances and a few good saves by Nige, uh, you know, pulled them through. I just think if I was a locomotive manager, I'd be very disappointed. My, my team has shot themselves in the foot, really. And now, as you can tell, that the game is, uh, you know, dying a death up to a point. Um, and they've got a mountain to climb. But, uh, you know, it's all leads, which is good news for us. Thanks, Tony. Is Hart with a cross. And Bridges! Oh! They're marching on together towards round three of the UEFA Cup. Eddie Gray absolutely overjoyed. What a great header that was. Back across the face of goal to release this man here. The goal scorer Michael Bridges. Ten goals now since he joined Leeds. That was the killer touch. That wonderful header, wasn't it? Well, it's an area of the game that... Uh, 
We've seen at Ellen Road where Lokomoto were vulnerable. The high ball into the box. They could never cope with it at all and even tonight where they've had warnings from the first game has shown that they still can't handle it. <laughs> what do you say if you're the coach of Locomotive Moscow to your team at half time? Well just the five goals to make up boys. Well I think uh, they, they did start well and they did have their opportunities and they missed them but what they're doing now really is from now on until the end of the game never mind before half time or going into half time they've, they've played for the pride you know they've got to keep the shape the discipline and not lose that because they've played for the pride you know they've got to keep the shape the discipline and not lose that because if they do Leeds can go on and score three or four McPhail Bowyer Batty. McPhail. I think David O'Leary can be very proud of his young team. To come away in difficult conditions and weather the storm and score two away goals. Can't really ask much more for the first half an hour, can you? There's uh, Kuehl with a cross, Bridges is in there, the goalkeeper's made a mess of it, Becker, that's number three. Oh, is it? I think the referee's whistle has gone, and he's chalked that one off. Maybe he's feeling uh, slightly well, I think generous to locomotive. Yeah, I think he's been to the goalkeeper here, there's not much of a, a tangle there, he's, he's leaned into him slightly, but the end of the day I don't think it will make much of a difference interestingly just after the uh, ball entered the net the referee pointed back towards the centre circle and one or two locomotive Moscow players thought that was 3-0 they didn't argue about any challenge on their goalkeeper oh, look at Moscow Moscow Gary had to, they had to take one of those opportunities they had one of those chances that came a begging and they missed them and it, it is demoralising when after all that you go another goal behind and I think the first goal by Hart from a penalty was a killing blow David O'Leary was saying in the press earlier this week the first goal here would be the most important well his team have got it and they've got another and here's Harry Kuehl just unable to link up this time with Michael Bridges see at least I've managed to do this what do you have here's a goal and it's nice to see your man sticking it away there, you know Bridges is, is a player that's it's going to have to work very hard for those 90 minutes uh, and sometimes it can be a difficult time where you, the opportunities don't come and you're doing all the donkey work but other than the donkey work he's got himself on the score sheet Woodgate to Bowyer, look at this, Bridges and Locomotive now making elementary errors and Leeds are pouncing on them and this is Kuehl and Batty, surely Batty's not going to shoot. No. Still in. David Batty has only scored nine goals in his entire career. He actually says that he enjoys delivering uh, a telling pass just as much as he does finding the net. Although I'm sure England fans would slightly disagree with that, bearing in mind the shootout against Argentina at France 98. Laverick has a free kick. The uh, important thing is that Leeds don't pick up any further yellow cards tonight. Two players, Lucas Radderby and Lee Bowyer, both sitting on two yellow cards. A third would mean suspension for the third round. And now Leeds have a free kick. So I'm in the coach of Locomotive Moscow in his second spell with the club. Unable to make an impact on Leeds United in this game maybe the current scoreline also gives rise to the theory that the match at Ellen Road was no fluke by Leeds Locomotive Moscow essentially saying that that it was a blip a rare blip for them to be beaten so heavily but two down in half an hour here suggests otherwise this is Harry Kuehl for Leeds United skipping away from Laverick and there's plenty of space for Gary Kelly now if he can retrieve the ball Back has made a run inside the box this is Batty Smirtin, Loskov and 
and Bulikian again goes to ground under the pressure of a tackle by Jonathan Woodgate. Other than, others, Gary, other than the result uh, from Ellen Road and tonight, I think what we must look upon is, yes, the result is important, but what we have here is a very young team in Leeds United. Uh, even the experienced players uh, domestically can gain knowledge from this uh, this particular tie and uh, I think that the, the Leeds players, the young boys, will learn an awful lot from this uh, opportunity to come to Moscow in these conditions. Uh, we know that they had a three goal advantage but to go and that short examination where they were under the caution the first 15-20 minutes, they've come through that and that in itself is a learning process. Well, Leeds, no doubt, will face tougher opposition later on in this campaign. Who knows, they could end up playing away to Juventus. Or uh, Roma, or any of the top clubs. Ajax are in there. Rangers, of course. Arsenal. Yeah, Even Celtic, if they can overcome that one-goal deficit tonight. I think when you, you mention the teams that are going to come in and the teams that, that already are in the competition, uh, it shows you that really the tournament, the real tournament, starts after this game. But uh, you've got to earn the right and Leeds United at Ellen Rose performance and tonight have earned the right to go in with all those big names. Peter Risdale, the Leeds chairman, was uh, telling me earlier today that if he could handpick a opponents for the next round, he said he'd quite fancy Celtic. Well, certainly it'd be two full houses. Uh, they've got, uh, uh, what would you say, a tradition of playing each other. Many years ago, I remember, before I actually went to, to Leeds United, the great semi-final. Smirting, Sarkeesian, and Lavericks here for Locomotive. He needed to stay on his feet. And this is Bridges now, who allows the ball to run to Harry Kuehl. Bowie is joining the attack. Kuehl with a cross, and it's taken by Adi Fulin. So far, they've not been able to handle Harry Kuehl at all. He's, uh, he's put in at least half a dozen crosses there. That one there was a dangerous cross, as most of them have been, and um, you would think they would try and get someone a little bit tighter on him. That's going to drift out of harm's way. I think we're looking at uh, the Leeds fans. We were a second ago there. Many, well, a thousand of them, I think, have made the trip to the Russian capital. Taking in the sights, Red Square, the Kremlin. A couple of the uh, tourist traps they were aiming for. Chugainov, the captain of the team. Loskov now for locomotive. Cut out by Ranavi. Tackled by Lavrik, who did well then. Loskov, Smirty. Loskoff has won the ball back, he says, come on, I need some red shirts up there to help me out. And a rare shot on goal, testing the reflexes of Nigel Martin, who actually made his debut in Moscow in 1992 for England when he was a Crystal Palace player. He actually came on as a substitute for Chris Woods. Nick Matulin getting himself in a spot of bother. And once again, Leeds have a throw in, and that was again another weak defensive play by Lokomotiv Moscow. They needn't have given Leeds a throw in. Yes, but it was also good work by Bridges and uh, one or two of the other Leeds players backing him up, putting pressure on him, winning possession. Loskov allows the ball to fall to Smirchin and Sarkeesian, supported by Lavrik. Solomon Martin, Smirtin, just couldn't find an opening, terrific hassling there by Gary Kelly, and look at this ball here for Bridges, 
He thought about having the initial shot. Well, we wondered whether Michael Bridges would be able to lead the line tonight on his own. He's given a resounding yes to that question. Uh, he's used the space. That ball was played down, right down in the left channel. Used the space, got onto it, went and attacked his man. Back at trying to help the ball through towards Bridges. That's Batty joining the attack. Bridges again. Oganassian is the covering player. And it's a goal kick. Incidentally, Leeds have visited 20 countries since their first European tie back in 1965. However, this is the first time the club have come to Russia. And could be back here if they draw Spartak Moscow. We passed their stadium when we were driving into the city last night. Spartak have finished third in their Champions League group and now enter the UEFA Cup. Boya and Batty and McPhail it's all Leeds United at the moment an air of despondency is settled on the locomotive team as Kuehl weaves his way around again there could be an opening here and more by good luck than good management locomotive Moscow escape without conceding goal number three Radovi has to be careful the referee is reaching for his pocket this could be Radovic's third yellow card of the tournament and he'll now miss Leeds United's next game in the UEFA Cup. So he's suspended. Maybe that's a chance for Michael Dubry to stake a claim. Well, I think he, he's assessed the situation, he hasn't died in that. I think it's a little bit harsh. The boys got to buy him, but uh, the consequences are that, uh, as you say, he's, he's going to miss a game at least. I think we've seen earlier now, we've seen Harry Kuehl, he's most dangerous. Not only did he take his man on and beat him, but he pulled a beautiful ball across the, the edge of the six yard box there. And he is a constant threat. Sola Martin, Sarkeesian, Sola Martin. Sarkeesian and Laverick's on side here. Bulikin waiting for the cross, it never came because Ian Hart got his body in the way. Yeah, the coach is absolutely despondent. He looks very cold as well. Laverick with the cross. Away by Lucas Radaby. Smirting. Easy for Nigel Martin, his lead strike counter attack. But Laverick has done well here. Burr, eating up the ground and picking out Bridges Kelly has Backer in support and David Batty as well and here's Eric Backer leads offside the referees allowed the advantage there Woodgate Sheenin leads fly back into Heathrow tomorrow afternoon and are going to stay in London as they prepare for their Sunday game away to Wimbledon remember Leeds have a two point lead at the top of the Premier League at the moment then their players several of their players will turn their attentions towards international duty although no Jonathan Woodgate required for England no, David Hopkin, who's not actually in the starting 11 tonight, required for Scotland either. That's Bridges. Back up. Bridges again, who's recently broken into the England under 21 team. Nigel Martin. Smirting. here is Laverick 
and Lokomotiv Moscow are being given a hard time by some of their supporters Loskov Kelly did well to win the header Becker Laverick Smirtin Smirtin just trying to find that opening Loskov and that's a legal challenge by Batty Batty complaining that the uh, his opponent went to ground a bit too easy there as Kuhl takes the fight towards the Russians again it's hard Nick Matulin for once caught the ball he hasn't caught many crosses over the two games so far and Radovi that's going to be a free kick I suspect to Leeds for dangerous play Sarkeesian's boots was very high and up in the face of Lucas Radaby. Well, looking at the game now, Gary, you can only see uh, Moscow, looking at the Moscow, really playing in little patches. Generally, the game has been dictated to by Leeds United. Uh, they have control of it, especially on the left-hand side here, where the chances are continually being created by Harry Cool. One minute of stoppage time to be added on. That's all. Smirtin. Confirmation of that fact. Kewell and Boya. Our lead's going to get another before the break. Not quite like that. Joe, I think you've been impressed by Leeds, haven't you, over the uh, opening 45? Yes, I have. I think the, the, the first 10, 15 minutes, it was, only, it was always going to be like that. And I think they, they will gain from that experience that it's not been too costly. Uh, they've gone on from that, they have played well, and they've always looked dangerous. Bridges up front has led the lane well, he's played the role ex extremely intelligently. Oh, and here's Bridges. He's pinched another goal. What a wonderful finish by Michael Bridges. It's 11 goals for him this season, and it's turning into a rout in Moscow. At the other part of the game, we've seen he, he ran offside on two or three occasions. Since that, he's tamed his run. He, he's got his timing perfect. And no more than this opportunity that he's taken here. He's got in behind the defender. And he's placed it right in the corner. And it, he certainly deserves it. You know, when you're up front on your own, it's a little bit soul-destroying. But when you get the goals, as he has done tonight, it makes it all work well. Team passes to the next round, and he's on for his hat-trick now. What a tidy finish this was. Helping the ball wide of Nick Matulin. Look at the confidence in the way Bridges took his goal. And there's the half-time whistle. What a start for Leeds United. They thought they'd have to weather a storm or two. That storm blew itself out inside two minutes here in Moscow. A uh, penalty by Ian Hart and two goals by Michael Bridges means that Leeds are comfortably ahead. They lead 3-0 on the night, 7-1.